Does understanding how the foundation moves benefit a player during improvisation? Certainly. Here's an example of the foundational patterns as they move through the cycle of fourths. All notes, chords, and keys ride these patterns wherever they go. In this case, it's through the cycle of fourths. The highlighted numbers show that every fourth pattern within the five pattern repeating system is the next pattern in the cycle of fourths. In other words, the numbers highlighted 1, 4, 2, 5, 3, 1, 4, 2, 5, 3, and they keep repeating like that, is the sequence in which the foundational patterns move any note, chord, or key through the cycle of fourths. Let's watch the foundational patterns change through the cycle of fourths, starting with pattern three in the key of G. And remember to watch the highlighted note move across the string. Pattern three in the cycle of fourths goes three to one. Pattern one in the cycle of fourths goes one to four. Pattern four in the cycle of fourths goes four to two. Pattern two in the cycle of fourths goes two to five. Pattern five in the cycle of fourths goes five to three. Pattern three in the cycle of fourths goes three to one. Pattern one in the cycle of fourths goes one to four. Let's watch the foundational patterns change through the cycle of fourths, starting again with pattern three in the key of G. Remember to watch the highlighted note move across the strings again. We just went eight keys through the cycle of fourths using the same five pattern sequence. Now, what can we get out of that? We can get this. This is the cycle of fourths on the guitar. E, A, D, G, C, F. See, now since the guitar is not tuned like that, it's tuned like this instead of like that. That means to complete the cycle of fourths, we have to play the last two strings a step higher. So here would be, see that? And then that's why you saw those notes move in that way in the example. Now, how else can we use those fourths? Well, if you look at the patterns good, you'll see that all of the numbers followed that system across the neck. Not just the root, the note that we had highlighted, they all do. So here, for purposes of this example and being able to hear these key centers better, I will play the five in every pattern. Uh, for instance, pattern three is the key of G. It starts on the seventh, the root falls on G. A G chord. One, two, three, four, five. Now let's play on the five. See that pattern covers it. Okay. So now I'll move these patterns from pattern three in the cycle of fourths to pattern one and so on. And I'll be playing the fifth chord in every key. Here we go. Pattern three, pattern one. 
Pattern four. Pattern two. Pattern five. Pattern three. Pattern one. Pattern four. Pattern two. Pattern five. Pattern three. Pattern one. Pattern four. Pattern two. Pattern five. Pattern three. Can you see that? We're all the way back up to F. We just took a dominant seventh chord, 16 steps through the cycle of fourths, starting on D7 and ending on F7, all while following this repeating five pattern sequence through the cycle of fourths. Here's another example. Say you're playing blues. Say you're playing on G7. Well, notice the pattern one. I know if I'm in the one, I'm going to a four. So from one, I'm going to a four. If I move up to the next position, I'll, both numbers will increase. I'll be going from a two to a five. Then uh, up higher, it'll be three to one. Then it'll be four to two. Then it'll be five yeah. five to three. So then it'll be back to one. So there's five ways to do everything. There's five spots. So there. That's another way you can use it. There's only one of many though. 